is Paul Cezanne, a French artist who painted during the late 1800s. He is known as the father of modern painting. He created the post-impressionist style of artwork. This new style of artwork that came around in the late 1800s in Europe went against everything that the Impressionists had created before. In his artworks, he uses shape and bright colors to depict many different things. He has lots of different paintings. Some of them are landscapes like this picture. But most of Paul Cezanne's work that he's the most famous for are still lifes. A still life painting is a work of art showing an inanimate object, usually things that are natural like fruit or food, flowers, rocks, shells. Cezanne liked to draw all kinds of different things in his still lifes. He, most, he mostly used fruit, and most famously are apples. He loved to paint and draw apples. Saison would create his still lifes using different things in his house. He would arrange the objects in a nice way on a table and would sit and watch and look at all the different shapes and colors he could see. He would paint the objects on his canvas to create still lifes. He really liked to use color, shape, and space. For our next project, we are going to be our own Paul Cezans. We are going to create our own fruit still life. You can set up a still life in your house using the fruit that you have, or you can follow along with Mrs. Holt as she draws a still life. All right, my little saisons, you are going to need a few objects to start your drawing. You're going to need a piece of paper. Could be a paper that's all white, or it could be notebook paper, whatever you have on hand. You're also going to need something to color with. Crayons, colored pencils, you could use markers, you could even paint this artwork if you had paint at home and your grown-ups will let you. You're also going to need something to outline with. A sharpie, a black pen, a black marker, or even a black crayon if you have that. The first thing you need to do in pencil is write your name and your class code on the back of your artwork. Don't write the word name, write your name. Your name and your class code on the back. If you are in Miss Jeanette Grasha's class, Miss Gigi's class, your class code is the letter G, the letter G, and the number one, GG1. If you are in Miss Porterfield's class, your class code is the letter P and then the number one. If you are in Miss Robertson's first grade class, your letter is R1. Make sure your name and your class code is on the back of your artwork before we begin. Flip your paper over and we will start drawing. All right, friends, to start drawing your bowl, you're gonna start with your paper horizontal, not vertical, not diagonal, horizontal. You're gonna take your finger and find the center of your page on the side, the middle. Then you're gonna move your finger up just a little bit. From here, you're gonna count into your paper, one fingertip length, two fingertip lengths, three, four, five, and make a dot. You're gonna do the same thing from over here. Oh, my dot's small. Here's my dot. Down the middle, go up a little bit, and go one fingertip, two fingertips, three fingertips, four fingertips, and five, and then make another dot. Now I'm gonna draw a line that connects my two dots. It's a straight line across. This is the top of my bowl. 
Now I'm going to draw the bottom of my bowl. It's a semicircle or a backwards letter D. Or a forwards letter D. When I turn it back, I have my bowl. Now I need to draw the table that my bowl is sitting on. The table is not going to be right underneath my bowl, but behind my bowl. So I'm going to go up halfway and starting my pencil at the line of my bowl, I'm going to drag it straight across to the edge of my paper. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Go up halfway to my bowl, draw a straight line to the edge of the paper. Now it looks like my bowl is sitting on a table. Now I need to draw the fruit inside of my bowl for my still life. You can choose whatever kind of fruit you'd like. Apples, oranges, bananas, pineapples, whatever you want to put in your fruit bowl. To do this, we're not going to draw our apples sitting on top of our bowl. We're going to draw our apples inside of our bowl. And to do that, we're going to make it look like the bowl is covering up half of our fruit. So if I wanted to draw an orange, I'm not going to draw a circle sitting on top of the bowl. I'm going to draw a circle that looks like my orange is coming out of my bowl. So you don't see all of the orange because part of it is inside the bowl. If I want to draw my apple behind my orange, I can do that, my apple behind my orange sitting inside of my bowl. I can draw the shape of my apple coming out from the side of the orange, which is going to make it look like my apple is jutting out from my orange. And then when I bring it around town and stop here, it looks like my apple is coming out of my bowl. I'm going to add the back here and add the stem of my apple. And a leaf. So we're practicing overlapping shapes to create the appearance that things are in front of and behind other things. So I have my orange. I'm going to put a little place for the orange stem. I have my apple. Now if I wanted to draw my banana, or no, I'm going to draw grapes here. I can draw my grapes just by drawing circles that you don't see all of my circle because it's covered up by the bowl. So I want to overlap those circles to make it look like my grapes are in the bowl behind my apple. And in just a minute, we're going to show in front of a banana. So I'm going to draw the stem to my grapes. Now I'm going to draw a banana behind all three of the fruit I've already drawn. To do that, I'm going to start over here and let my banana live, look like it's coming out of the bowl here. So I'm imagining the bottom of my banana coming here. Oh, and it's going to come out right here at the top. It's going to come, I have a wide banana coming out like this. And then it's going to live off the page a little bit. Because it's a big banana, it's going to live off the page a little bit. I'm going to draw a line for the edge of the banana. Okay, You could even add another a pear. Maybe there's a pear here. If I want my pear to look like it's behind my apple and my grapes, I'm going to draw the curve of my pear. I'm going to draw my stem. And now I have a full fruit bowl. I have my orange, my apple, my grapes, my banana, and my pear. Yum, yum. 
Remember, when you're filling your fruit bowl, you don't want to draw the bottom part of your shape because we don't see that part. It's being covered up by the bowl. So you don't draw the full shape. You only draw the part of the fruit that is sticking out of the bowl. Now that we have our still life drawn, we want to add in some patterns. We want to add patterns to our background, the space behind the bowl, to our foreground, the space in front of the bowl, and to the middle ground, which is the bowl itself. So you're going to add patterns behind the bowl and to the table that your bowl is sitting on and to the bowl itself. You can use simple patterns just by make you can make simple patterns just by using straight or diagonal or horizontal lines. If you use straight lines, I like to turn my paper when I do because it I draw lines straighter this way. Leave some space between each line. Oh, I'm I'm at my my bowl now. I don't want to draw a line on in front of my bowl because the background is happening behind my fruit. So I'm gonna imagine that the next stripe starts here, and I'm imagining, I'm imagining, oh, I might see a part of it there, and I won't see the rest of it. I'm imagining my next stripe starts here, and it's gonna come up, oh, I might see just that part. My next stripe might start here, and I'm imagining it coming up. I won't see it. Oh, I'm going to see it right at the top of my apple. I move a little bit. I would imagine to see it here. Again, it might start there and see it here. And now I can just keep drawing straight lines. So when I go to color this, I can create even more interesting patterns by alternating the colors I'm choosing. So I might do red, green, red, green, red, green red, green, red, green, red, and make a pattern out of colors. Or I could do three colors. I could do red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue. You can make all kinds of interesting patterns with color. Now I need to add a pattern to the front of my paper where the table is. Also, we call that the foreground in art. The foreground is what happens in the front of the paper. So for this one, I'm imagining that this is a tablecloth. So my tablecloth might have flowers on it. So I might draw flowers. Your tablecloth might be a checkered pattern. Or it might be wood. I go around and draw all my flowers. And when I color this in, it's going to look really interesting. There will still be flowers on the pattern out from underneath my bowl. So I'm going to draw the flowers that might be happening underneath the bowl as well. All right, know the drill. Once we're done coloring, it's time to outline. You can use a Sharpie, a black pen, a black marker, or a black crayon, even a black colored pencil. So you want to outline all of your lines in a black color, whatever materials you have. All right, once all of your lines are outlined, you can take your eraser and erase some of those pencil lines. So you don't want to see any of those pencil lines. Now it's time to color in. You can use crayons, colored pencils, markers, whatever objects you have at home to color with, that's what you can use. Make sure you're doing first grade coloring standards, staying inside your lines, coloring nice and solid, no scribble scrabble. 
No peekaboo spots. Okay, now that your fruit's done, we want to do our background. Remember to do a pattern if you use stripes in your background. Staying inside the lines. First grade coloring standards, no peekaboo spots. Even when you go behind your fruit bowl, you have to continue that pattern. So you have to think. Whatever colors you're doing, you have to think about where you need to put them. And make sure you color in all the spots behind your fruit in your pattern. Now I need to do my floral print on the table. So I'm going to say that the background of my floral print is going to be pink. So I'm going to go do pink behind all the flowers. You could do polka dots. You could do crisscross checkerboard. You could do stripes again for your tablecloth whatever kind of pattern you want to put down on the table you could even make it look like a wood table if you used brown and I'm going to show some different examples of how you could do that those different backgrounds Okay, now I need to finish my bowl by adding in a pattern to my bowl. And there's some examples of different still lifes. For the next few minutes, you are going to finish up your work. I have a timer. Um, up on the video. So when the timer counts down, that is the end of your related arts time um, with me. If you want to continue working after the timer goes off, feel free to do that. If you're done for the day, that's perfectly cool too. Put your artwork somewhere safe. Save it for another time. Bring it to school to show Mrs. Holt if you're done. I'd love to see all the work that you're creating. So I'm going to play some music for the rest of the time. And I will see you guys in class again soon.
All right. Now that we're done coloring, you are all done. If you don't finish this today in the 30 minutes, that is absolutely okay. You can work on this later, save it for a rainy day to something to color, set up another still life and do another one if you finish early. If at any time during the video you need to stop and catch up, rewind, slow down, whatever you need to do to follow along with me, make sure you do that. I would love to see these in school. If you finish, bring them to class so I can look at all the amazing artwork you've done. It's been another wonderful virtual art lesson with you guys. I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful day.